about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, brings you Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a homicide detail. An old couple suddenly disappear from one of the fashionable neighborhoods in your city. There's no trace of them, not a clue to their whereabouts. Foul play is suspected. Your job, find them. If you want a long cigarette, smoke the best of all long cigarettes. Smoke extra mild Fatima. Yes, Fatima is the king-size cigarette which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended to make it extra mild. To give Fatima a much different, much better flavor and aroma than any other long cigarette. That's why Fatima has more than doubled its smokers coast to coast. Enjoy extra mild Fatima yourself. Best of all, long cigarettes. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment... Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Saturday, September 30th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the day shift out of homicide. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Captain Blaine Steed. My name's Friday. It was 3.45 p.m. when I got to room 67A. Missing persons. Hi, right, Jim. Hi. Where's Al? Next door. He'll be back in a minute. Oh. Well, there's a phone message for you in the book from your wife. What is it this time? She didn't say. Should have been a bad week. No, what's the matter? Lucille. Who? Our cat. Again? Kittens. Had 11 of them by the time I left the house. She was a healthy kid. Yeah. Don't know what I'm going to do with them. Hey, your mother likes cats, doesn't you, Joe? You gave us two from the last litter. We still got them as healthy as their mother. Yeah? Never pass up a meal. Hi, Joe. Hi, Al. Sorry to keep you waiting. Just getting this report straightened out. Here you go. Mm-hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Walter Apperson. How long have they been missing? Well, today's the fourth day. They're an elderly couple. One of their next-door neighbors got a little worried when he didn't see them around the house. Came in yesterday and filed a 316 on them. Let's see. Clarence Stokely. Is that the neighbor? Yeah. It says here he lived next to the Appersons for 28 years. Never known him to take off like this. Checked Apperson's cottage out there. Dirty dishes on the kitchen table. Not the way an old couple leave a house normally. And how about friends and relatives? And Stokely called them. None of them have seen or heard from the Appersons for a week. Uh, checked out two of their three living relatives. Cousin in Eagle Rock and East Alhambra. They don't know a thing. Mm-hmm. What if I can see that, Ben? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well, how about the third relative? Nephew, is that it, Joe? Yeah. Frank Apperson. Says here he goes to a private college out near Monrovia. Yeah, I haven't been able to contact the kid. He's away on a vacation. Hmm. Possibly the old couple might be with him? Not according to Stokely. Says the Appersons seldom spend any time away from their home. Well, that's all we've got to go on, huh? Just the neighbor's story? Yeah. Oh, well, he says he checked the garage, too. The Appersons' car's gone. How does that tie in? Well, Mr. Apperson hasn't driven the car for the last year and a half. He has a nephew or some friend drive whenever he wants to go out. Uh, one more thing. It may mean something, may not. What's that, Al? Mrs. Apperson's an invalid. Yeah? She hasn't left the neighborhood in ten years. 4 p.m. Ben and I left the office and drove out to interview the neighbor of the missing couple. After checking at his home, we finally located him at his place of business, a small barber shop at the corner of 54th Street and Maxford Place. The chipped gold lettering on the window read, Jim Dandy Tonsorial Parlor. Smaller lettering in the right-hand corner of the window read, the proprietor, Clarence Stokely. Except for a man in a white barber's smock sitting in the first chair, the shop was empty. How do you do, gentlemen? Hi. How are you? You Clarence Stokely? That's right. Police officers, Mr. Stokely. I'd like to talk to you about the missing persons report you filed yesterday. Oh, yes. Glad to help. You find out anything yet? You know the Appersons pretty well, do you, Mr. Stokely? 28 years. Sure, we're worried about Walter and Kate. Never known them to do like this. Say, uh, I couldn't be of service to you, could I? Well, I just had a haircut a few days ago. 
How about you, Joe? Looks like you could stand a trim. We could talk it over while I cut your hair. Don't think we'd be disturbed. They used to look well. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'll take your coat. Oh, thank you. Let's chair there. You bet. Mm. Mr. and Mrs. Apperson didn't mention anything about going away on a trip, did they? Not a word. That's what makes it so strange. Hey, let me fix this around your neck here. Oh, yeah, thanks. Play cards with them twice a week, usually. Katie Apperson's a fine whist player. Want me to take some off the sides here, officer? Yeah, please. Not, not too much, though. Mm-hmm. When did you first notice the Appersons weren't home? Uh, Tuesday night. We thought we might go over and play some cards. I see. Is that enough off right here, officer? Mm, let me see. Yeah, that's fine. Mm. How is it you waited until yesterday to report the Appersons missing? Mm. Wife and I are great friends of Walt and Katie's, but it's certainly none of our business if they want to go off for a few days. Uh huh. Besides, we thought if anything was wrong, Buzz would have said something. Who is Buzz? Anderson's nephew, Buzz. His name's Frank, whatever he calls him, Buzz. I thought he was away at school, a place out near Monrovia? Yeah, Stanley College, private school. And he only stays there part of the time. He's usually home early in the week. We were under the impression that this nephew, Buzz, was on a vacation. Mm, that's so. That's the first I've heard. Honey, Walt and Katie would have told us. Oops, that bull? No, sorry. Let's get this little dog. Head down. Mm-hmm. You, uh, think the nephew might account for the Apperson's car being missing? You think he might have taken it on his vacation? Mm, possible, I guess, but I think Walt would have mentioned it. That car was old, but he was particular about it. Mm-hmm. Maybe sit it out on top here a little? Mm, all right, fine. Do you know the nephew at all? Pretty well. Nice young fellow. He got along with his aunt and uncle all right, did he? Yes, indeed. I just loved them both. Do you have any idea where the Appersons might be, Mr. Stoffel? No, I don't. Neither does my wife. That's why we called you people. We don't mean to be Budinskis, but we're worried. Maybe just a little more off the top, officer? No, I think it's fine. It's okay. You have no idea where we might find the nephew, Buzz. Mm, not if he's away on vacation. Might check with the school. Buzz might have gone off with a couple of his friends. A little something to dampen that down? Yeah, fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that porch light of theirs been burning for three nights and three days. It really kicks up the old electric bill. Well, maybe the Appersons may have overlooked it. Huh? Maybe. All right, sir. Yeah, that's a good-looking haircut, if I say so myself. Yeah. Fine. Here you go. Thank you. Oh, uh, here's our card, Mr. Stokely. We'll be checking with you. Bye. Bye. Borrow your comb. Barber never combs your hair right. That's not going to help you. Huh? It's the way he cut it. What do you mean? He put the part on the other side. After we left Clarence Stokely's barber shop, we drove out to the Apperson home on 54th Street, just below Seaboard Avenue. We checked the house from top to bottom. The closets and the bedrooms were well stocked with clothes. None of the luggage seemed to be missing. In the basement, Back on one of the cupboard shelves, we found a bottle of cyanide. It was half filled. In the kitchen, we found dirty dishes still lying on the table. We put in a call to Ray Pinker at the crime lab, and he came out and took sample scrapings from each of the three plates and specimens from each of the half-filled cups of coffee on the table. He also took along a bottle of cyanide to examine it for fingerprints. Ben and I called the record bureau just as a matter of routine and asked for any make and warrant from the nephew, Frank Buzz Apperson. R and I called back with the information that Frank Apperson had been arrested for grand theft auto Six weeks before, his trial was pending. We checked back with the barber, Clarence Stokely. He knew nothing about the trouble. The next morning, Sunday, with the help of school authorities at Stanley College near Monrovia, we got in touch with the parents of two of Buzz Apperson's friends. They told us, as far as they knew, Apperson was on a camping trip with their sons. They were expected back in the next day around noontime. From one of the boarding students at Stanley College, we got the name of Buzz Apperson's girlfriend, a Miss Norma Louise Bernard. She lived in San Marino. Sunday night, we drove out to interview her. I don't know what I can tell you, Sergeant. Buzzy's on a camping trip with two of the fellows from school. That's all I know. When did he leave? Do you know, Mr. North? Last Monday morning. They left from school. Said they'd be gone for a week. They're coming back tomorrow. Mm-hmm. 
You know Buzz Apperson pretty well? Yes, I do, as well as anyone, I guess. What is he, just a casual date? Oh, Buzzy and I have been going steady for almost a year now. I see. How old are you? I'm 19. Have you ever met the Appersons, his aunt and his uncle? Just one. They're awfully sweet. How did Buzz get along with them, do you know? Well, fine, I guess. The only argument Buzz ever told me about was a month ago. He wanted more allowance, and his uncle said no. Was Buzz ever in any trouble, to your knowledge, Miss Bernard? I don't think I know what you mean. What kind of trouble? Well, I mean, was he ever in any trouble at the college or with the law in any way? Oh, you mean that car Buzz took about two months ago? Yeah. We were supposed to go to this school dance, and Buzz didn't have a car. I guess he was ashamed. He said he knew the fellow he borrowed the car from, but the day after the dance, the cops came. How did his uncle react to that? Well, there was a terrible row, Buzz said. I really shouldn't be telling you. Bud made me promise. Uh, how were feelings between the boy and his uncle before he left on the trip? Did he mention anything to you about that? Well, we had a date last Sunday night. I asked him how things were at home. He didn't seem to want to talk about it. The last time you saw him was Monday morning. Is that right? Yes, just before he left on the camping trip. Are you sure he went on that trip? Well, of course I'm sure. How do you mean? He said, no matter who asked you, I went on a camping trip. He said it a couple of times. Do you offer any explanation? No, but I knew everything was all right. Oh, is that so? How? I could tell. Way well, kissed me. The next morning, Monday, Ben and I checked with the missing person. There was no additional information on the missing couple. We phoned the barber, Clarence Stokely. He had seen or heard nothing further of Mr. and Mrs. Apperson. We went down to the bank where the Appersons had their account. And with the help of the manager, we found that three checks had been passed on the Apperson checking account since the previous Wednesday, a full day after the missing couple had been last seen. One check was for $100 and two for $50 each. All of them had been cashed in Los Angeles and all bore the signature Walter Apperson. After examination, it was found each signature had been carefully forged. 10.45 a.m. We went back to the office. Hi, you two. Going someplace? Oh, hi, Ray. No, just coming. You finished checking that stuff through the crime lab? Yeah. I was passing over this way. I thought I'd drop off the report for you. Got it right here. How'd it go? Fingerprints on that bottle of cyanide. Latent prints got to make. Here's the name on it. Mm. Frank Buzz Apperson. Mm -hmm. You look over those dirty dishes we found in the Apperson house? Checked them through. Nothing. How about the samples you took from those cups? Whoever drank that coffee is in trouble. It's loaded. Yeah? Enough cyanide to kill a horse. Listening to Dragnet, the case history of a police investigation presented in the public interest by Fatima Cigarettes. If you smoke a long cigarette, it will be in your interest to listen to this case history recorded by a typical Fatima smoker. Hi there. My name is Bab Beckwith. Bab, that's short for Bethany Ann Beckwith. I live in New York City and I'm a fashion stylist. The other day at a showing of the new fall styles, I ran out of cigarettes. A friend of mine, a designer, introduced me to the new long Fatima. I really wish someone had told me about them sooner. Fatimas are a lot milder than the cigarettes I've been smoking. And they have a delightful flavor, too. I'm very glad to recommend them to you. Because I know, from experience, it's wise to smoke extra mild Fatimas. And more and more smokers every day are finding that out. Actual figures show extra mild Fatima has more than doubled its smokers coast to coast. So enjoy extra mild Fatima yourself. The king-size cigarette, which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos, superbly blended to make it extra mild. You will prefer Fatima's much different, much better flavor and aroma. You will agree. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. The best of all long cigarettes. <laughs> Monday, 1 p.m. We obtained a specimen of Frank Buzz Apperson's signature, and we had Don Myers and handwriting check it out against the signatures on the three checks. Both styles of handwriting matched in every detail. At 1.30 p.m., the parents of Buzz Apperson's two friends called to tell us that their sons were back from their camping trip. We checked the Apperson home. The nephew wasn't there. We drove out to see his two friends. Under questioning, one of them finally broke and admitted that Buzz Apperson had not gone with him on the camping trip. In the process of questioning the boys, one of them told us that he had been with a suspect two days before the trip when he purchased some medicine at the campus drugstore. We went to the drugstore and checked the prescription book. 
It showed Frank Buzz Apperson had purchased and signed for a bottle of cyanide two days before the disappearance of his aunt and uncle. Ben and I drove back to the Apperson house. When we arrived, the officers on stakeout had the boy in custody. No, I'm sorry, officers. I wish I could help you out, but, well, maybe it's not as bad as you think. When did you last see your aunt and uncle? Monday, before I left on the camping trip. They're in the habit of going off like this, are they? Oh, sure. Aunt Kate and Uncle Walter have friends all over. They go on trips all the time. Is that so? How do they get there? They drive, both of them. They've been driving for years. You talked to your uncle's friend, this Mr. Stokely, next door. He says your aunt and uncle haven't been driving for at least a year and a half. Stokely, the barber? <laughs> He's one of the neighborhood cranks, Sergeant. Anybody around here can tell you that. Minds everybody's business but his own. You don't seem too worried about your aunt and uncle. Think they're all right? Well, we'd have heard by now if they weren't, don't you think, sir? They probably took off on a trip. That's just about the size of it, I think. You know, how about this trip of yours? Sir? Well, this camping trip that you just come from. Oh, a couple of fellows from school. We went camping up by Big Bear for a week. Mm -hmm. Pretty good fishing for September. Ever been up there? Yeah, have you? Well, sure. I just said that's why we've been camping. Say, uh, I'm a little thirsty. <laughs> There's a couple of bottles of ale in the refrigerator. Careful, Bob? No, no, not right now. Thanks. Well, would you mind if I had one? Sure could use it. No, you go right ahead. We can talk in the kitchen. Place is in kind of a mess. I guess I'll have to go in and clean it up. You sure aren't usually leaving in a hurry like this? Not usually, no. Dishes all over the place. She probably figured she'd wait till she got back to clean up. Mm -hmm. Aunt Kate does things like that once in a while. That's so? Yeah, she's like that sometimes. Well, happy days. Yeah. Okay, Buzz, you want to tell us? Hmm? Where are they? Your aunt and uncle, what happened? Say, I don't think I know what you're talking about. What's the trouble? Come on, Buzz, you know what the trouble is. Let's have a straight story. It's going to save a lot of time. Sir? We can draw it out as long as you like. It'll be a lot easier if you cooperate. Look, I, I don't know what you're thinking, Sergeant, but whatever it is, I don't understand you. What are you getting at? Something's happened to your aunt and uncle. We're pretty sure you know what it is. Well, how could I? I've been away on this camping trip. You've been away, but not on a camping trip. Sir? We've checked you out from the day you came to live with your aunt and uncle, boy. You're going to make us spell out the whole record for you? But I've been away. I just got back. I don't know what's happened. We found a bottle of cyanide in the basement cupboard. Your fingerprints are all over it. Well, sure, that figures. We use it for bug poison in the garden. I take care of the garden. I use it all the time. You use it in coffee? Sir? The police chemist checked what was left in two of the cups that were on that table there. Cyanide in both of them, enough to kill six people. Now, look, boy. We've talked to your neighbors, your teachers... Your girlfriend, Norma, and those two pals you were supposed to go camping with. Now, we can drag all of them out if we have to. They're going to make a liar out of you. Sir? I think you got it the first time. Well, there couldn't be any cyanide in those cups. Why should there be? We think you can tell us that. But I can't. I don't know anything about this. I haven't any idea what you're talking about. Is this some kind of a gag? You know better than that. How about those checks, Buzz? Sir? The ones you forged your uncle's signature on. You need the money that bad? I didn't forge any checks. I was away on a camping trip. Dave and Willie were with me. They can tell you. You got in a row with your uncle. Maybe about that stolen car. Is that how it happened? It had nothing to do with it. I want to see Norma. I want to talk to Dave and Willie. They'll tell you. How about the man at the campus drugstore? Sir? The one you bought the cyanide from. You want to talk to him, too? Look, are you two fellas kidding me? This must be some kind of a gag, is it? Your aunt and uncle are missing. There's evidence of foul play now. Does that sound like a joke? Well, how should I know where they are? I wasn't there. I, I, I want to talk to Norma. I want to see Dave and Willie. They'll tell you. Why don't we drive over and see him now? It's all right with us. Want to get your coat? Sure. Norma's the girl I'm engaged to. Dave and Willie are my best friends. They know everything about me. A couple of real nice guys. And so? Sure. Well, let's go, Ben. Yeah. Dave and Willie have been all through school with me. They can vouch for me. Yeah? Sure. You can take their word, too. We will. 5.50 p.m. We left the Apperson house, drove across town, and headed over the Arroyo Seco toward the home of the suspect's friend, Dave Killifer. 6.33 p.m. We took a right turn off the freeway, headed south for another mile, and finally pulled up in front of the Killifer home. Buzz Apperson's friend, Dave, met us at the front door. What's it all about, anyway, Buzz? What's the pitch? Well, that's what I want to know. Look, is this some kind of a gag you guys cooked up on me? We were on the trip, Buzz. I don't know anything about any gag. 
What's all this about your aunt and uncle? I don't know. That's what these officers want to find out. I'd like to have you tell us again, Dave. Um, was Buzz here with you on that camping trip? Sure, that's why we came over. Now, tell him about it, you know. All right, let's have it, Dave. Was he with you on that trip? These officers aren't kidding, Buzz. They want the truth. Well, tell him I was with you and Willie. We went to Big Bear. They're looking for your aunt and uncle. I'm not going to lie now. You didn't go to Big Bear with us. All right, Dave, thanks. Well, he's lying, officers. Who put you up to this stunt, Dave? They'll throw you in the jug for a gag like this. Who's behind it? You're the guy who said it was a gag. You told us to tell everybody you were up at Big Bear with Willie and me. How about leveling? What's it about? He's lying. What's it about? You've got nothing to hide. Have you? He's lying. You can tell that, can't you? Let's go talk to Willie. He'll tell you the truth. Joe? All right. Thank you, Dave. That's all. All right, Sergeant. Sure there isn't anything I can do? No, thanks. Just the same. Good night. Okay. Good night. Anybody could tell he was lying. Isn't that right, Sergeant? Well, he's your friend, Buzz. Why do you say that? Well, he was just plain lying, that's all. Couldn't you tell? No, I couldn't. How about you, Ben? <clears throat> Not me. Why would he lie, Buzz? You told us he was your pal. Some kind of a stupid gag they're pulling. A gang in the fraternity I belong to. Dave's one of them. They've done it before. I don't know why they're lying, but they are. Where's your friend Willie live? Sir? You said you wanted to drive over and have us talk to Willie? Oh, yeah. Oh, where does he live? Look, would you mind very much? How's that? I've got a terrible headache. Would you mind very much just driving around a while? I'd like to clear my head a little. I can't figure this thing out. All right. Why don't you roll down the window there, bud? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it feels good. Sure is hot out tonight. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's been a pretty long summer, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Say, uh, I guess maybe we ought to forget about going over to Willie's place. He strings along with the rest. He'd probably lie, too. You said you wanted to, wanted us to have a talk with him. Yeah, but I've been thinking about it. He'd only lie. It'd be better if we drove over to see Norma. That's the girl I'm engaged to. Yeah, that's what we understand. If anybody can give you a straight story, Norma can. She doesn't live far. Straight down the road here in the San Marino. Yeah, we know. Oh. Sure would appreciate it if you'd drive over there. Okay. Norma can straighten this thing out. Swell girl. We're going to get married as soon as we can. Oh? Yeah. She saw me leave on that trip to Big Bear. She won't lie to you. Sure wish my aunt and uncle had left a note where they were going. All this trouble. You mind if I lay out a couple things for you, Buzz? How what do you mean? When a police officer picks somebody up, he's got a good reason for it. Yeah, but Dave was lying, Sergeant. You know that. It's a lot more than what Dave had to say. Now, you've done something wrong. We don't know what exactly, but we've got an idea and we're going to find out. You can't prove anything. I got that cyanide for the garden. We use it around the house for different things. You don't use it in coffee cups. What happened, boy? Where's your aunt and uncle? Next turn for Norman's house, up by the signal. Turn left. Yeah. Come on, Buzz. You know what happened. You're going to have to face it sooner or later. If it's not tonight, then tomorrow morning or tomorrow night or the night after. But I don't know what happened. The facts say you do. And they're not going to disappear. Now, you made the problem. It's going to stick out in front of you until you find an answer. How about it? Norman will know what to do. Wait till I talk to Norman. Why don't you stand up and face it, boy? Getting your girl mixed up in this isn't going to help. She'll know what to do. Can she find your aunt and uncle? Can she? How about the three checks? How about them? Can she explain those signatures that you forged? Maybe those fingerprints on the cyanide bottle. Can she help you out there? Well, look, Buzz, I believe you. You love the girl. You want her mixed up in all this? Here we are, Jim. Okay. That's the right house, isn't it? Yeah. That's Norman's house. All right, what's it going to be? Do we go in? She'd cry. She'd only cry. Norma thinks a lot of me. Yeah? She's a swell girl. I don't want to have to tell her. 
She'd only cried. Yeah. I killed my aunt and uncle. 8 p.m. Buzz Apperson directed us to drive to San Pedro to the west basin of the Los Angeles Harbor. We got out of the car and followed him to the end of one of the piers. He told us his story and we put in a call to the office. Within half an hour, a fireboat and a barge were on the scene and a diver was sent down into the water a few yards from the edge of the pier. We stood by and watched. Buzz Apperson, Ben and I. I put quite a bit of cyanide in the coffee. I had to be sure. How'd you manage to get both of them in the car? I waited till way after dark and then I dragged them out. Drove down to the end of the pier right here. Put the car in low. It went over. Right where the diver went down. Just this end of the barge. All right. There are those lines up there. There's the first one. You better stand back then. Yeah. Watch it. Okay, sir. Let's go. December 15th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 92, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. And now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you. To successfully prosecute a criminal suspect, the working detective gathers all available physical evidence. And in the crime lab, this evidence is carefully selected and screened to determine its worth. So with the cigarette. The makers of Fatima select and buy the finest tobaccos, both Turkish and domestic. And these tobaccos are skillfully blended to make Fatima extra mild. Best of all, long cigarettes. Pack after pack, they're extra mild. Now, if you're a long cigarette smoker like I am, smoke Fatima. Frank Buzz Apperson was tried and convicted of murder in the first degree and sentenced to life imprisonment. He is now serving his term in the state penitentiary. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice for Dragnet comes from the office of Chief of Police, W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Fatima Cigarettes, the best of all long cigarettes, has brought you Dragnet from Los Angeles. Coming up, Duffy's Tavern. Be sure to hear Theater Guild Sunday on NBC. 